Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome students in last class we we'll di we discussed about the first postulate of quantum mechanics which said that for a quantum mechanical system there ex exists a wave function or a state function that contains all the information about the system. However, that first postulate did not tell us how we get those information from the system. For example, if I want to know the position of that system or the momentum of the system or energy of the system or any other classical observable that, that I would, would like to know about the system, how would I do that? The first postulate simply said that there exists this state function that contains all the information that you can possibly have. In we will continue our discussion further, especially to the second postulate which gives us a recipe as to how we can get some information about the system. The second postulate says that for every classical observable, there exists an operator in quantum mechanics. So, uh, if we want to get some idea about a system, we must ask what do we want to know about this system and when we have answered that question what property we want to measure for that system, then the solution to uh, obtain that information is to bring that operator which is provided by quantum mechanics. In today's lecture, we will discuss something some more, uh, we will try to get some more ideas about what this operator is and how we can use to get information of, uh, about the quantum mechanical system. Uh, in, in quantum mechanics, as the, as the second postulate said that we have an operator for every classical observable. Now, in classical mechanics, we would or for when we have prepared a system, we would perhaps want to know a few uh, dynamic observable uh, abo ab about that system. For example, one common thing that we, uh, we are always interested to know is that what is the position of the particle. So, position is given by an operator x. Uh, any operator in quantum mechanics is, is denoted by a hat on top. So, x is, is uh, the position operator. How, what is its function? An operator is essentially a rule or a command that, that gets uh, carried out. So, this operator x is simply the action of it is multiplication uh, by, by x which is the, the, the variable uh, along, that uh, along that dimension. So, as if I have defined my position as uh, in the x, x coordinate as uh, x cap or the operator x. Similarly, I can do that uh, y cap would be the operator to get the position uh, along y axis whose action is simply multiply by y or z cap is the operator that gives me idea about the position along z axis. The other quantity that we uh, would like to know is that what is momentum. So, the classical observable momentum corresponds to a quantum mechanical operator and this quantum mechanical operator along x axis is given as I am u minus i h bar, i is the imaginary root h bar is the Planck's constant h divided by 2 pi and I am using a partial derivative uh, notation which says that d by dx. So, this operator means the, the momentum operator the I give it as p x momentum operator with a hat and its, its, uh, its action is that you multiply it with minus i h bar and differentiate with respect to x. Similarly, if I define my p y which is minus i h bar the partial derivative with respect to y and p z minus i h bar d by d z. The partial derivative the reason why I am using partial derivative is that p y differentiates the function only along y direction, but the function may have uh, dependence on x and z, but this c corresponds only to the partial derivative. But if your function has only one dimension either x or y or z, so then, then this partial derivative becomes normal derivative. If I know the momentum, then I can get the kinetic energy, kinetic energy which is given by uh, 
T or even sometimes you would see uh, K uh, cap. So, that the hat represents that I am talking about an operator. So, this operator we know the kinetic energy is simply P square divided by 2 m that momentum square divided by uh, twice the mass. So, I can use the same uh, relation here. So, I can see the momentum would be P x square divided by 2 m. So, how would I get that? I would get this by P x square by 2 m plus P y square. Uh, so, this is which is essentially if you solve it you would get so this is the expression for the kinetic energy operator uh, the potential energy operator v this is this is potential energy is often multiplication the action of this potential energy operator is often multiplication by by v which is often the often uh, depends on the uh, coordinates x x x y z so the action of potential energy operator is simply multiply the potential energy with the, with the function that is coming so now we have discussed about the position operator the momentum operator the kinetic energy operator the potential energy operator so the total energy operator, the if we want to up, uh, obtain the total energy E, the if the observable is total energy E, the quantum mechanical operator corresponding to this energy is called as Hamiltonian or which is given as H hat. The Hamiltonian can have kinetic energy term plus potential energy term. So, so far what we are discussing is that if I want to determine the position. I have the wave function which contains all the information, but if I want to measure the if, if I want to ask uh, the, the system what is the position of my uh, particle, then I must bring the position operator which is x, y or z. If I want to determine the momentum, then I must use my momentum operator. If I want to use the kinetic energy, I must bring my uh, kinetic energy operator and if I want to measure the total energy, then I should bring the Hamiltonian which is actually the energy operator. Uh, the other quantity that we would actually come across in, in the course of our uh, discussion uh, would be the angular momentum. Uh, we know we define angular momentum L as R cross P, uh, it is a vector product between, uh, uh, R, between R and, and P. So, since we know R which is which has x, y, z dependence, I know P which has P x, P y, z. So, therefore, the quantum mechanical operator corresponding to L x, I can write as y, P, z uh, minus z, P, y, this is these are all operators. And what is the action of y operator? The action of y operator is simply y and what is p z? This is minus i h bar d by d z. I see p z is, is here and what is the action of z operator? Simply multiplication by z and what is p y? That is minus i h bar d by d y. If I solve this, I would have minus i h bar y d by d z minus z by d y. Now, this is the uh, quantum mechanical operator corresponding to L x. Similarly, I can define the operator L y, the operator L z and, and, and so on and so forth. So, what we learnt is that for every classical observable that I wish to know uh, about my quantum mechanical system, quantum mechanics offers me uh, an operator. So, to gain some insight about the inform uh, about the system which, which all the information are there uh, in the wave function, but to get any particular I uh, any idea about any particular observable, I must bring that uh, quantum mechanical operator which corresponds to that classical observable. Okay. Uh, next, we would discuss some 
uh, properties uh, of operator. Suppose uh, I have an operator A and I have got another operator B and I am applying this operator A and B together on a function f. When an operator acts on a function, it transforms the function to either itself or another function. The operator is simply as I, as I said the operator is simply a command that gets executed on a, on a function. So, operator A plus B is, is uh, uh, when it they together act on a function f, we can also evaluate this as individually A acting on f plus individually B acting on f. So, this is the sum rule that the uh, operators follow. Similarly, there is a product rule. So, if I have operator A multiplied by operator B and they act on a function f, then I can do this as I first use keep operator A and first apply operator B on operator f and then this would be when operator B acts on an oper uh, function f, then I may get a function I am calling it g and now this function which is coming because of the action of operator B on function f will be acted upon by operator A and then again it may give me another function h I, I, I can write. So, this is way as this this is the product rule, this is the sum rule. We would now use uh, the, we would apply these two rules uh, by taking two, two operators and, and an uh, example function. So, in our example we will take let us say A operator A is our position operator and operator B is our momentum operator and I am using only x uh, along uh, x, x direction. So, and let us define our function f which is simply a sin x function. So, what would be the action of a plus b? That would be x minus i h bar d by d x and the function sin x. So, I see that first I can apply the uh, operator x on this function. I know the action of operator x is simply multiplication uh, multiply it by x. So, x sin x minus now I am applying the second operator uh, minus i h bar d by d x on sin x. So, I see minus i h bar comes out and then I have to differentiate this function. So, what do I get? So, I have x sin x minus i h bar cosine x. When I differentiate uh, sin x, I would I would have uh, my uh, cos x. So, now the action of operator a plus b on a function f is, is given here. Now, we would do the same, but now we will do we will use the same operators a b, but we would apply the, the product rule. So, now what do I have x operator So, we know that if there are two operators a b apply which are uh, which are multiplied and they are being acted on uh, on, a, on a function sin x. Uh, so, I can apply the second function first. Uh, onto the, the wave function. So, I have x I keep it outside and then first I see what this does. So, I am applying the second function a uh, second operator b onto the wave function uh, the function sin x. So, I see the result of that is a cosine function and now this function is being acted upon the by uh, the, the operator a here. So, I know action of operator x is simply multiplication. So, therefore, my result is minus i h bar x cos x. 
this is what uh, this is how I evaluate uh, the the pro product rule. I will continue uh, this uh, discussion instead of doing this uh, product as a b can I if I do b a product and apply it on a function f what would I get. So, b is my momentum operator a is my position operator when I do that I, I first write down i minus i h bar d by d x this is the second operator they act on the wave function psi x. Now, uh, when, when I have these two operators first I apply this operator over here. So, I am writing down the first operator as it is the action of x is simple x sin x. So, now this is a new function which is obtained after application of the operator x into the function and this new function will be acted on by this this operator the momentum operator. When I see here I see that I have to differentiate d by dx, but a function which is product of two functions x and x and I will have to be careful here because I uh, will use the, uh, the, the product rule. So, I first uh, take out x and differentiate differentiate sin x or take out sin x and differentiate x. So, then when I apply b a on a function f and I apply a b on function x a uh, function f I see the results are different. So, therefore, the, the operator algebra is not necessarily always commutative. So, what I see is that a b f is not equal to b a f. So, this means in other words I say operator a and operator b they do not commute. If a b uh, op op action of operator a b on f would have been equal to the action of operator b a on f then I would have said that the operators a and b commute. However, in the e example that I showed th here the operators do not commute. We will come back to this uh, commuting uh, commutation uh, relation between operators in, in our future classes, but we will continue our uh, discussion on uh, further some properties of the, the op op operators. Uh, another important properties of uh, another important set of operators are uh, known as linear operators. I define an operator A and I would call it a linear operator if it satisfies two conditions. Condition number one is that if I apply my operator A on two function f of x g of x if it is equivalent to applying the same operator individually to this this, this uh, applying the same operator to these functions individually. This is first condition and the second condition is that where c is a uh, real constant. So, if I have if I multiply uh, my function f of x with a real constant c and the operator a applies on it if it allows my c to come out of the action of operator a and if, if the left hand side and the right hand side are equal then uh, the, the operator can be uh, a linear operator. So, these are the two essential conditions uh, before I can declare that my operator uh, is, is a linear operator. Uh, so, let us take an example let us say my operate operator is a square root operator. What does a square root operator do? A square root operator when it when it acts on a function it simply gives you the square root of that function. So, suppose 
So, do you think uh, this would be a linear operator? Let us find out. Suppose, if I have f and g as a two function and I am taking the square root of them, the left hand side would be uh, sorry the right hand side will be square root of f plus square root of g. This is not not correct. So, therefore, I provide this inequality and therefore, the square root operator is not a linear operator. Even in fact, it also does not satisfy the second criteria that if I take a constant c real constant c and multiply with the func function f and take a square root this is not equal to this. So, therefore, the square root operator is not a linear operator. Uh, similarly, you can show if the operator a is a square operator instead of a square root operator, square operator would simply square the function that also would not be a linear operator. Now, we would take an example as d by d x. Is this a linear operator? Let us find out. Suppose, uh, we, I, we apply, we check the first uh, condition d by d x acts on f of x plus g of x we know from our uh, knowledge and calculus that I can we can write so the first condition is a uh, first criteria is met first criterion is is met uh, this equality holds good so let us look at what happens to the second one so if I multiply this then I am I, I know if the c is a c is real and c is also a constant. So, it, it is independent of x. So, therefore, I can bring c out of the differentiation. So, therefore, the operator uh, d by d x is actually uh, a linear operator. Uh, linear operators play a very important role in quantum mechanics. In fact, all the quantum mechanical operators uh, that, that correspond to a classical observable uh, are uh, linear. So, the operators that we discuss for, for example, the position operator, the momentum operator, the kinetic energy operator and so on and so forth, they all are uh, linear operators. So, in, in, the, in this course, most of the operators that we would discuss would be linear operators and when we say linear operators, we have these two essential conditions uh, in, in our mind. So, uh, just, just to summarize the uh, state where we are, the first postulate uh, suggested that there exists this wave function which contains all the information and the second postulate told us how to get some information. The second postulate's recipe to get some information is that, that if you want to up obtain some idea about a particular classical observable, then you go and find out what quantum mechanical operator does this classical observable represent. Because quantum mechanics guarantees us that for every classical observable, there exists a, a quantum mechanical operator. So, we, we looked at some properties of the operators and now we would uh, continue our discussion and take forward uh, to see how operators and functions uh, have a relation uh, with, with each other. So, uh, let us take uh, explain this uh, in terms of some examples. For example, if I take an operator d by d x and act this operator on a function sin x, I know that I would get cosin x. So, what this operator did to this function is that it changed the function from sine function to a cosine function. If I use the, uh, the same operator, but apply it on a different function, for example, I apply it on x square, then I get 2 x. Again, the operator changed the form of the function from x square to 2 x. I will take a third example. The third example is that when I differentiate a function which is e to the power a x, the differentiation of this function would give me a multiplied by e to the power a x. In the first two cases, the operator acted on a function and gave a new function. In the third example, the operator, the same operator d by d x, the same differential operator when it acts on a different function, in this case an exponential function e to the power a x, it actually gives back the function itself. It does not give a new function rather it gives back the function itself. Let us look at yet another example. Will the second example is 
second derivative d square by d x square. If I apply this function on sin x, so this essentially means that I have to differentiate sin x twice. So, first time when I differentiate I will get cosin x and then I will have to differentiate cosin x again which will get, give me minus, uh, si, minus sin x. So, therefore, that would give me minus sin x. And here you see that the function I started with sin x and after the operation of this operator d square by d x square I get minus sin x. The function actually comes back with a, with a minus sign. So, let us look at uh, the action of d square by d x square on x square. So, the action of this uh, the first derivative gives me 2 x and when I differentiate it again I would get 2. So, what I see is that this function x square upon uh, when I act this function uh, when I act d square by d x square on this function then I am getting another function which is which is 2 now. So, I would do the same for the third function what I get is that that when I d square by d x square acts on this this uh, e to the power a x function I get back the function multiplied by a square. So, we see that there are there are there are two different types of functions in the first set of examples sin x and x square got transform to different function whereas, e to the power a x got got back the same function we got back the same function after op operation after acting the operator d by d x. So, in this case when the action of operator reproduces the same function multiplied by some constant then this function is not merely an ordinary function rather it is a characteristic function of this operator and this goes by the name eigen function eigen word is, 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 is a German word which means characteristic and this e to the power a x is an eigen function of operator d by d x. However, sin x and x square are not eigen functions of operator d by d x. On the other hand when I look at d square by d x square sin x is indeed an eigen function of the operator d square by d x square because it gives me back the, the function itself multiplied by a, uh, by a constant minus 1. What about x square? x square is not an eigen function of d square by dx square because it does not give back that the function itself. On the other hand again e to the power ax is again an eigen function of d square by dx square. So, here what we see is that sin x is not an eigen function of d by dx, but is an eigen function of d square by dx square x square is neither an eigen function of d by dx nor an eigen function of d square by dx square e to the power a x on the other hand is eigen function of both d by d x as well as d square by d x square. So, we see that there, is, there are some functions which are eigen function of some operator. So, eigen function when you define eigen function we always have an operator in our mind the eigen functions cannot exist in vacuum. Eigen functions when we define an eigen functions they must be an eigen function of a particular operator and the constant that we obtain out of this uh, action. Uh, of an eigen function is called uh, the eigen value. For example, when we acted sin x by d square by d x square we got minus sin x. So, minus 1 is, is the eigen value or when we acted e to the power a x on d square by d x square then we got a square as the eigen value. So, we uh, this today we discussed about the eigen functions and eigen values and we will continue our discussion in the next class. Thank you very much.